Darkness. It's something we all face in our lives. So, it's a good thing I've made another LED controller to light up your home, office, project, or whatever other place you might have. I need to click a few buttons here. There. Today, I'm introducing the last in the AN Penta analog lineup. First, we have the AN Penta Mini, a nice and small five channel controller. Then we have the AN Penta Plus, also a five channel controller, but it has high power channels combined with much higher total power handling, Ethernet, and even a digital channel. Today, we're introducing the last in the in the lineup, in the AN Penta lineup, well, at least for now, and that's this guy, the AN Penta Deca. The same DNA as the other models, but this time with 15 individual output channels, so you can run lots of individually white LED strips, or for instance, three times RGB CCT LED strips from it. Let's take a look. First off, let's do a quick summary again. What is analog versus digital LED control? If you're not interested in this and just want to know about the controller, go to, uh, where is it? This timestamp and, or, you know, there are sections in the YouTube description and you'll, you can skip this part. So the main difference between analog and digital LED strip is really that digitally addressable LED strip has an IC next to or either built into the LED package to which you can send a data control signal to determine what the LEDs do. So the LEDs or the diodes themselves are basically the same, it's just that where the control is located is a bit different. Now for the digital part, this can be either individually addressable or per group on higher voltage strips. Analog LED strips are the same, but as I said, they omit that little controller IC next to the LEDs and the analog PWM signal that controls the LEDs and thus the whole strip is generated by the central controller and not by the tiny IC next to the LED diodes. So that of course calls for a different controller. So a DIG Uno, DIG Quad, DIG Octa, those are digital controllers. And well, the AN Penta series are analog PWM dimmers. So those can control dumb LED strips. But why then still use analog strips, which aren't addressable for, you know, the digital variant? Currently, you could say the following. If you're looking for really bright LED strips, suitable for main or task lighting, and or looking for very high quality whites, suitable for main or task lighting again, or applications such as in your kitchen or here in my film studio, then analog is still king and gives you the most and best options. Analog is potentially also cheaper because of less components involved on the strip since there is no IC per LED or group of LEDs. If, however, you are mainly looking for extra and accent lighting, potentially combined with some cool addressable effects, then digital is the best choice. Traditionally, these strips are a bit less suited for primary lighting purposes though. But new options keep coming available, such as the recent custom strip I introduced, which does a high power output combined with a decent to good white. My custom strip is sadly still out of stock, but I hope to have those available again in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for a video on that. Okay, okay. So with that out of the way, today I'm introducing the Queen LED AN Penta Deca, a 15 channel ESP32 based controller with lots of custom circuitry to go with it, making it a great all round PWM dimmer. The unique feature of this board versus the other in the lineup is that it has 15 individual channels. With these 15 channels, you can hook up 15 individual single color, such as white LED strips, seven times CCT, so dual color temperature white strips, or five times RGB LED strips, or even 
three times RGB CCT LED strips as well. Any combination of the above really. The controller is fully configurable and can be the central controller to control a variety of LED needs you may have. To reiterate some of the special features all of the controllers in the Quinn LED AN Penta lineup have, all controllers feature the ability to run high PWM frequencies. All testing has been done with 20 kHz PWM frequency, much higher than the generic 1 kHz or so you see on other controllers. A second feature, somewhat paired with that, is that the controllers are able to operate at a much higher bit depth. Digital is generally 8-bit and limited to 256 steps per color. At 20 kHz, the AN Penta controllers have 4096 steps available to it, making transitions and fades much, much smoother. Next to that, the Quinn LED AN Penta controllers have a variety of output channels ranging from 3 amp to 5 amp to even 10 amp with power injection. The AN Penta Deca we are talking about today has 15 medium channels, good for up to 5 amp each while keeping the total board max power into account. This is important because each of the positive outputs are actually individually fused with a 6.3 amp fuse each. With 6 positive outputs, that brings the total max board power to 37.8 amps, although I'd recommend staying around 30 amps. At 24 volt, that's 720 watts in total, and at that point you'll quickly run into power supply limitation issues before actually limiting, being limited by the board. Next to that, like all the other AN Penta boards, this board also has 24 volt up to 48 volt support, allowing you to run higher voltage strips to combat voltage drop as much as possible. The AN Penta lineup also features fully custom circuits and DC-DC converters, making the controller as silent as possible, including PWM noise. Especially combined with a meanwhile UHP power supply, no more buzzing power supply and controller. Then there are available button inputs, I2C, and well, too much to name really. So like in the introduction video of the AN Penta Plus, which you can find here, Let's quickly run through all the ports on the front and the back of the controller, which should explain all the abilities it has. Starting on the right side of the front, we have two large 7.62 mm pluggable terminals. These are doubled up and like all terminals color coded, so it's clear which wires go where. In this case, you can run up to two sets of 12 gauge wire to your power supply, something that's needed if you're going to run up to 30 amps in total. Please remember that you can still only use a single power supply per board. Left from that, we have the B1 to B4 terminals with two times ground and a 3v3 terminal. B1 to B3 are internally pulled high and debounced with hardware, so perfect to connect buttons and switches. Just connect it between the button input terminal and ground, and then the controller can detect the change when a button is pressed. Moving a little bit further to the left, we have a Stemma QT I2C port or I squared C port, making it easy to plug in expansion accessories. And left from that, we have a USB C port with full programming capabilities. So when you buy this controller, the hardware is yours. You can update WLED that comes with it pre installed. Uh, or switch to other software such as ESP Home or Tesmoda if you so desire. You buy it, you own it. And to round it off, uh, above that we have an external antenna connector that's RPSMA to attach the included external uh, Wi-Fi antenna for a great Wi-Fi reception. Here's a quick photo from the inside and you can clearly see the empty fuse sockets. This is because the fuses it comes with are soldered directly to the PCB to minimize heat. If you do happen to pop one, you can use the socket right next to it to put in a replacement fuse so everything stays easily user, that's you, serviceable. Let's move on to the back of the controller and we see three sets of terminals. There are three two pin red positive outputs, so six in total. Each of those is fused, as I 
explained before, with a 6.3 amp fuse individually. So when building your setup, you will need to divide the positive wires over these terminals and intern the internal fuses. Next to those red connectors, we have three times a black five port connector. These are for the 15 dimming channels, each capable of five amps max output while keeping the total board power in mind. And well, that's all the connectors really. If you've been looking for a PWM dimmer to control lots of dumb LED strips that run great standalone using WLED, this would be it. Running WLED, it also integrates nicely into Home Assistant, or you can run Home Assistant native ESP Home, which I generally use for the ones I run here at home, which has an even tighter integration and available options with uh, sensors and such, which, which you can expand the controller. As I just mentioned, I mostly run ESP Home on it because I often have a sensor attached or some buttons, and it also gives you access to the much higher bit depth, making fades and such very, very smooth. Maybe you've noticed the lights here. These are all done using analog LED strips. The combination of the high PWM frequency that isn't seen on camera and the high bit depth means you can do really slow fades with imperceivable steps. Did you notice the colors changing while watching this video? Maybe scroll back a little bit on the timeline to actually see this happening. Let me know down in the comments if you saw this happening or not before I pointed it out. As I already mentioned, this is the last controller type in the AN Penta lineup for a while. If you have a different configuration in mind or a feature that's missing you think people want to have, let me know in the comments. I've also started revamping the analog LED section on my website, testing lots of new strips and improving the recommendations there but that's a slow process, so please bear with me for a little bit longer. And well, that's it. The controllers, or well, all of them, but in now including the AN Pentadeca, are available from the usual sources. So Allnet for Worldwide, and Dr. Z's for US Local, and also from our new Canada local reseller, Jerem's. If you're from Canada, make sure to check out his shop. If there are any questions, you're always welcome on the Intermittent Technology Discord server. Or leave them in the video comments and we will try and get back to you. Thank you for watching and catch you guys next time. Bye bye.